Friends, welcome to Compline for Tuesday, the 26th of January. <laughs> Doesn't seem to matter how often I think what day it is before I start filming something, I always forget. So welcome to Tuesday, 26th of January. First thing I'd like to say is thank you to everyone who sent Kath and me um, your wishes and your love uh, after the funeral of my dad last week. Such a shared experience, isn't it, at the moment, with for many of us of, of grief, and I, I still don't really understand grief. Uh, comes in waves, doesn't it? Uh, I don't understand where my dad's gone, if I'm honest. I mean, I know he's gone to heaven, but then you start to think, what does that mean? Where is everything he was now? Um, and even though I'm just about to leave the Royal Shakespeare Company, after 20 years, <laughs> a piece of Shakespeare popped into my mind from King John, where Constance is mourning the loss of her son, and she says, grief fills up the room of my absent child. And I think for many of us, that's what all sorts of species of grief through this pandemic and the effects, and before, and not just the effects of the pandemic in the last year or so, has felt like that grief has filled up the space of an absent person that we love. And that we're in it all together um, uh, doesn't make it easier in one way, but makes it easier when friends are so kind. So thank you all. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Let's confess our sins together. Most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another that we have sinned in thought, word and deed and in what we have failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your spirit and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. O oh God, make speed to save us, O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be, world without end. Amen. So tonight we're going to share um, a poem by Henry Vaughan, who was a Welsh uh, physician, but wrote much um, uh, religious verse. Don't worry, it's not too long, and we're halfway through John 19, so we'll do a chunk of John 19, um, dealing with, as I keep saying, the business end of, of, the, of the gospel. <laughs> so if you need to uh, uh, go and grab a book, now is the time. This is called uh, They Are All Gone Into the World of Light by Henry Vaughan. They are all gone into the world of light, and I alone sit lingering here. Their very memory is fair and bright, and my sad thoughts doth clear. O Father of eternal life, and all created glories under thee, resume thy spirit from this world of thrall into true liberty. Either disperse these mists which blot and fill my perspective still as they pass, or else remove me hence unto that hill where I shall need no glass. So this is John, uh, chapter 19, from halfway uh, through verse 16. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put it on the cross. It read, 
Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but this man said, I am King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots to see who will get it. This was to fulfil the scripture. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleopas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfil the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there, so they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, the Jews did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, especially because the Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified, so that you also may believe his testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled, none of his bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of scripture says, they will look on the one whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed the body. Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. Then they took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices in linen cloths, according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. For the word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Remember Nicodemus, way back, Complins ago, we met Nicodemus. We met him briefly as well since then, but do you remember when Nicodemus as the scripture says today, came to Jesus by night and said, look, how can these things be? Well, somehow Nicodemus, we see now, has found a way of reconciling how these things can be and is openly a disciple of Jesus. Um, uh, he first came by night, but now he came in the daytime, as the scripture says, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes weighing about a hundred pounds. And that sounds like an awful lot of myrrh and aloe to me. Um, and it's just a measure of how Nicodemus has moved in John's 
uh, often stated uh, metaphor from the dark to the light. He's not known Jesus and now he does know Jesus. I'm not going to insult you by pointing out the significance of that. But um, just these little glimpses John gives us of people like Nicodemus and their um, working out of their vocation. What is Christ to me? Who is this man? As it says in Mark, who do you say I am? Um, Nicodemus, through faith, now has some idea. And um, I've got a lot of time for Nicodemus. <laughs> and I hope you have too. And so let's pray to the Father. Let's offer people that we love and that we still see to God. Let's hope that we value people that we see in our everyday lives, in our everyday normal lives. Let's try and give and take the best of everything we can from the people that we love and that we see. Let's offer people that we've met today to God. King of kings and Lord of lords, making the true light to shine. Light in our darkness now and evermore that with our lips and in our lives we may praise you. For you are our God, now and forever. Amen. Let's pray that our God does light in our darkness now and forevermore. Let's hold the times when we don't see the light before God. We know in our hearts that, especially in those times, our God is always there. And we sorrow that sometimes with our lips and in our lives, we find it difficult to praise God. But we give thanks for our Christian faith that we always come back to the thought that you are our God and you make the true light to shine now and forever. Amen. Visit this place, O Lord, we pray, and drive far from it the snares of the enemy. May your holy angels dwell with us and guard us in peace. And may your blessing be always upon us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And say together, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. So friends, have a good night. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the snow. Yet more toboggans. Amazing. How many people have got toboggans? Beyond me. Um, and um, I would just say, uh, 
<laughs> Apologies for muscling in on the Kirsty Wilkes show. <laughs> if you tuned in yesterday, you saw Kirsty morning and evening. Isn't she great? Isn't she great? How much does she give? Fantastic. Thank you, Kirsty. In peace, we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus, for the night is at hand and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. May the living waters of Christ cleanse us. May the Spirit descend on us and the blessing of God be with us this night and always. In the name of Christ. Amen.